Hey guys, this is Dak Man back with another video. All right, guys, today we're back picking up our new player guide series, and this time we are going to talk about the basics of controlling. The controller or troll, as it's typically referred to, serves several functions for a group, but it's unfortunately, in my opinion, probably the least appreciated role in DCUO. They have the ability to debuff enemies, buff the group, restore power to the group shield the group, and they have a special power that allows them a few free moments to pick up a fallen group member or work a console unhindered. So I guess let's go ahead and get started with how you want to spend your skill points. So first up is weapons, which will depend on which playstyle you choose for your trolls, so how many points you spend in weapons will be based on that. The next one is movement mode, which incidentally any movement mode is fine for the troll role, and I usually just spend one skill point to take the boosted version Though, if you have a few extra skill points, taking the extra control resistance or breakout power regen might come in handy from time to time. Then we move to the stat points. Now, let me go ahead and say here, there are a couple of ways that I would play a troll, uh, which we will talk about shortly, but some of your choices here can vary based on which way you choose to play. So I'll give you how I would spend my points here, and then we'll talk about some tweaks you can make later. So starting from the top, like with the DPS guide, you can choose to play hybrid or only with superpowers. I do not suggest using weapon mastery at all because it does really nothing to help you in your role. I personally use superpowers because my troll on the live server is munitions and my powers take a little longer to complete, so I end up just running them in a rotation back to back. But with the other troll powers, I would usually use hybrid so I can work in some attacks to rebuild my power. You then move down to critical power chance and effect, which I would fill first for the same reasons I mentioned in the DPS video. And then moving down to the bonus stats where I would get vitalization because it's your most important stat since it's the stat that determines how much power you return to the group. Uh, a couple other stats you could look at though are dominance, which helps with your control effects and content uh, as well as strengthening your shields. And then the other one is might and power, which you may want if you decide to go with one of the two ways to play we're going to talk about here in a moment. All right, so I mentioned there are a couple different ways I would play a controller, so let's go ahead and talk about them, how they work, what stats I would prioritize, and then some artifact options for you to consider. Now, before I get too far into this, regardless of which way you decide to play, I usually use the same basic loadout. One of each of the controller debuffs, the priority power heal, the de-aggro power, and then the supercharged shield that also regens your power. Your artifact and skill point choices will actually make all the difference in what you choose to do. The first one I'm going to talk about is what I would call a traditional power troll. Now, playing as a power troll, your intention is to keep the group as close to full power as you can while keeping the enemies debuffed and being ready to use your de-aggro power or supercharged shield in important situations. For this, after choosing between hybrid or superpowers as your playstyle, I would then fill out the critical power and magnitude first and then begin throwing every point into vitalization. Now, obviously, for your augments, you would go with vitalization, and your base mods, you should probably go with vitalization and power. As far as tactical mods, I would take the supercharged regenerating head mod for your supercharged shield, the 5% increased power pool in the chest mod, the power critical neck mod, and then I usually take the max damage mod for the hands. Everything else would be up to player choice. And then that takes us to artifacts. So for a power troll, the only artifact I would call a must-take is Parasite's Power Harness because it offers an extra power regen for hitting an enemy with a debuff, which you should be doing pretty often. The next one I like to take is Amulet of Rao because it increases the effect of your debuffs and allows you to hit more targets. This is, of course, not the only option, but it does offer you a buff to things you're already invested in doing. Now, at this point, you have one more spot, and it's honestly a bit of a toss-up. You could use the Entwined Rings of Azar, which is an OG artifact, but to be honest, it's only benefits to heal your party, and the likelihood is you already have a healer in the group, so there are other artifacts that would be more beneficial. That really only leaves you with two other controller-specific artifacts that would work. One of those is the Birds of Prey Calm Link, which gives you a power that once it's high enough will let you hit an enemy with all three debuffs at once, and by proxy, give your group another power heal. Now, I do have some issues with this artifact. One, it's basically useless until you get the artifact to 160. Two, it runs your debuff timing down to six seconds. And then three, it leaves you with two extra power slots that I really don't know that you can take much advantage of. And that's why I usually go with Grimbor's Chains, which by 120 will allow your character to put out a field on the target that does hinder the enemies and also does extra damage. So it works pretty well. 
Now, obviously, when it comes to artifacts, these aren't the only options. So if you're a veteran controller, put your trio of artifacts in the comments and let us know why you use those. The second way I see playing a troll is as a buff slash battle troll. Now, these play really well in small group content, uh, bounties, as well as a second troll in raid content. Now, like a power troll, I would still keep all the buffs active and you would also still restore some power to the group. But instead of trying to keep everyone's power topped off, you would focus on buffing the group and doing more damage. And because of this, there are a few changes you could make to your skill points. One thing I would consider is after getting your vitalization up to 100, start putting skill points into might and power since you would be trying to tack on extra damage. You could also put points into critical damage and effect since the damage becomes a priority playing this way. Now, with your augments, I would either completely switch the vitalization out for might or at least split the difference. Your base mods, though, would be vitalization, power, and might. I would keep the tactical mods the same, except I would consider just using your DPS neck piece that would already have a damage-specific mod in it because the critical power mod won't help you with the main artifact that we're going to be going over. Okay, so speaking of artifacts, there is one that is a must-have, and that is the Claw of Alcoon. Uh, which turns your priority power heal into a buff for you and three members of your group. But now as you get higher in the levels, you eventually get to buff the entire raid group, gain a 5% critical chance and magnitude, and gain a buff to your natural power regen and vitalization to help negate some of the loss of having to give up your priority power heal. So the question then becomes, what are you going to put with it? Well, since you're going with damage, I think Grimbor's Chains is a natural fit because one of its major effects is to add more damage, so I would pencil that one in. So that leaves us down to our third artifact slot. Now, one option would be Parasite's Power Harness, which would get you some more power regen, but putting out more power doesn't really help your goal. I would dismiss the Rings of Azar for the same reasons I dismissed it before, and that takes us down to the BOP, or Birds of Prey, comlink, which I still have the same issues with. But freeing up the extra couple of power slots could let you put some better damage powers in there. And then once you got the comlink high enough, you would get the bonus power heal for getting all those 3 debuffs out on the same target. However, I still don't feel that gets you closer to your goal, which is why I would use the Amulet of Ralph. Not only do you get a bonus to your debuffs, but you also put those debuffs on more enemies, which in conjunction with Grimbor's Chains will spread that effect to more enemies and allow them to carry that effect as they move. As I said earlier, guys, these aren't the only options, so if you're a veteran controller who plays the battle-type controller, put your trio of artifacts in the comments and explain why you like what you use. So to wrap this up, guys, I have some thoughts on playing a controller. So, first of all, make sure you keep your debuffs active, especially on bosses. Not only does it help your group finish the fights quicker, it also keeps your power over time active. If you are a power troll, make sure not to forget your priority power heal. Without power, the DPS can't do damage, the healer can't heal, and the tank can't pull the adds, and that is your best way of injecting power into those players who are running low. But make sure you use your de-aggro power before you try to pick up a fallen group member. It does remove any aggro from you and gives you a temporary shield. Just remember that fight mechanics can override those effects, so don't think it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. Another thing you want to keep in mind is situational awareness of when to use your shield. That shield is an eight-man shield. It also restores power to the group, and it is an opportunity to protect the group. So make sure you don't just use it willy-nilly. You need to pick your times to use that shield. And lastly, guys, keep line of sight in mind. If you can't see the target, you can't power heal it. So if there's a pillar or some other object, I mean, even sometimes small ones, I mean, that's kind of the joke in my league. You know, there was a pebble in my way. I couldn't get the heal off on you. Uh, but if there's anything between you and the person that you're trying to give power back to, you will need to move to get any effect. All right, guys, that is my basics of controlling video. So make sure, guys, that you leave a like, a comment, especially if you have some pro tips for new players just getting started with controlling. Share this video with anyone you know who needs a push in the right direction. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will talk to you in the next video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can also follow me on Twitter at the link in the description section below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next video.